So he had a he had a challenging childhood, and I think his intention. It's taken me almost half a century to come to peace with this. His intention was good, but he drove me relentlessly to achieve as a child. And they probably thought that was super cute, but all I could think about was like, I had messed up and now we weren't going to have ice cream. And, and my dad got really angry with me in the car. Oh. And he said, you, did you hear all those mistakes that you made? And oh, man. I kind of like just pulled out of my body, which turned out to be a really useful skill in life. And I thought that was like the first moment I realized that it's really bad to make mistakes in public and I will never, ever do anything I'm not already good at. I had, I had completely suppressed that until I was speaking with a coach and she asked me some questions around failure and why, why I was so afraid to fail and what did I decide it would mean about me if I failed at something. And that question just completely stopped me in my tracks. I had never consciously thought about what I decided it would mean about me mm. if I failed at something. My parenting style is best described as winging it <laughs> because I, at the beginning, I thought, okay, this is the kind of parent I need to set out to be. And I had all these ideas of what it was going to be like and how I was going to parent. And I read all these parenting books, which I quickly realized, bless my cotton socks. Um, it's a moment by moment thing. And one of the key things that I learned growing up, though I never appreciated at the time, is my son and my daughter are not me. One of the greatest things that I've learned that works is in the moment when I feel that I'm about to absolutely lose my shiitake, mm -hmm. is take a moment and breathe. Just take one breath something how did I go into banking being such a creative soul who loved to paint and write and write poetry and and the truth is I thought that that part of me somehow was wrong it was never going to pay the bills it was all fun and games but now it's time to get serious so you know I was going to get into facts and figures and, and a career and within five or six years I had made it to director and I thought this is my life. This is my world. And I think that that little locked vault of all the creative stuff was there were like the gremlins inside were like banging on the lid and saying like, mm. Hey, Hey, remember us? Remember when you like to do fun things? Mm. And I completely blacked out in after I made it out of the shower and I went into this anesthetic sleep and I slept through the school run and stuff like this started to happen. That was totally unlike me. Wow. And I slept through my train stop coming back from coaching clients and I'd wake up, you know, like way at the end of the line or something else. And, and then as soon as I got rid of all of that scaffolding that was holding me up, like the coffee and the wine and the chocolate and the carbs, she said, expect that you might feel a little bit worse. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually when the whole house of cards came down. What I really enjoyed about having to go to work every day, although I was there a little too long for my liking, was the camaraderie and the being up to something together. Mm. And also there were some really smart people there mm. in the group. And I chose this guy who, you know, he, had, he looked very well put together and he was very smiley. And we sat together and he said, Mandy, I've been watching you. You know, you, you always look very well put together and you say the right thing and you're I'm, I'm a little bit intimidated by your intelligence. And I was getting really Oh, I quite like this. This feels quite good. <laughs> and then he said, I don't buy it. He said, you fool everybody in this room. He said, but you don't fool me. I think enoughness, and I can only speak from personal experience here, is coming to a state of inner peace, of knowing that part of me will never be enough to satiate that that overachiever in me, and that's okay. Mm. Because there's nowhere to get to. There's nothing more to be. All of the beauty, and this sounds like such a cliche, but all of a sudden I understand it in a profoundly different way that all we really have is being open in this moment and being connected to one another in this moment. Mm.
Waking at dawn, packing the gear.